All right, bike number 12 on the road to buying every single Trek bike in existence. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Talalipop and this is the Trek Slash 7. I walk in a room and I stand out. They meet me and turn to a fan now. Cause everything I sat and planned out. It's finally going to plan now. A slap on the wrist for the handouts. My head's above water, I swam out. And made that shit seem like a damn drought. Don't think y'all fully understand now. I'm black and on tracks with a tan now. So greet me respectfully and bow. I'ma still be the guy that I am now. But it's hard and I feel like the man now. I swear it's no question, hands down. I went to the stage from the stands now. I'm outstanding, so I stand out. Not outstanding, I'm up in the sky. No way around it, cause now I'm that guy. Okay, as promised in my last video, this channel is only new bike days. I'm buying a new bike in every video. <laughs> okay, that was a joke, but I am basically spending every paycheck I get on a new bike at this point, so might as well be that. But uh, hopefully it's entertaining for you guys and you continue to keep watching. Uh, so definitely hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if content like this is interesting to you. But yes, in this video, we are going to be talking about this bike, which is the 2023 Trek Slash 7. We're going to go over all the specs on this one, the price, the weight, and I'm going to be showing you my initial test ride of this bike at the end of the video. I will save a full-on trail ride for another separate video on its own, um, but I have not ridden this bike yet, so you'll get to see my initial impressions on this one uh, towards the end. But for a background, this is the least expensive Trek slash model that you can buy from Trek. Uh, however, that does not mean it's cheap by any means. It still costs 3830 US dollars at the time of me making this video right now. But it is definitely a great bike and it is specifically Trex Enduro race bike fitted with 29 inch wheels, long travel suspension, and some downhill focused frame geometry. So let's jump right in and start talking about the specs. What's oh, man? Tire sealant. All right, so first let's talk about this beautiful Trek slash aluminum frame. Uh, first of all, this color is absolutely magnificent. It is black olive, which I think is a very creative color name because it's actually like this dark green color or dark olive color in the sunlight when you see it in the sun. And it has these red accents, which is pretty much identical to what an olive looks like. So I thought that was a really creative name choice on Trek's part. Now this bike is made from Trek's Alpha Platinum Aluminum, which is their highest end aluminum that they offer, which means it will have really smooth welds. So you can see that uh, in different areas on the bike, the welds look pretty smooth that you can't even really tell in some areas for sure but it is also their lightest weight aluminum as well as their strongest aluminum which is absolutely necessary for this type of bike this enduro race bike needs to have a very strong aluminum to keep it uh, from da getting damaged besides that we do have uh, boost 110 spacing in the front boost 148 in the rear normal mountain bike hub spacing for any high-end mountain bike these days we also have some nice rubberized protectors one for the chainstay right here which is pretty common on bikes these days now nothing too special but it does keep the chain noise down and prevents your frame from getting damaged or the paint from getting damaged in this case uh, but we have a very generous large down tube guard here a shuttle guard down tube guard whatever you want to call it but it's rubberized prevents uh, any rocks or anything from hitting the frame and damaging it as well as if you want to load it up into a truck or something it's not going to get damaged there on the paint but then of course I got to talk about one of the coolest features on this frame for this year and this is the inclusion of the bits in frame storage from Bontrager so I'm going to open this up here on the down tube and you can see 
see there is in-frame storage on this aluminum bike. Typically, uh, this is only available on carbon fiber bikes and any brand, and Trek pretty much pioneered, uh, including this on some aluminum bikes as well. So that's really nice to see. Gives you an added little feature on the aluminum bike. And when you're spending that much on a bike, it is good to have some nice features like that that are pretty cool. And while we're here, let's talk about the frame weight. So on Trek's official website, they list this bike as weighing 33.29 pounds, which is a fairly light figure for an enduro bike. However, I, uh, mine does not weigh that much at all. Mine weighs 35 pounds, as you can see on this Park Tool scale here, which seems more accurate just when I'm lifting it. I've lifted 35 pound bikes before and it feels like one of those. And I'm not complaining about that. I mean, you know, when you're buying an enduro bike, you're not necessarily buying the lightest bike out there. So I'm not too worried about that in this case. All right, so now let's talk about the suspension on this bike, which is super cool. Um, well, I mean, it's pretty low end in this case, but it's cool that they have some big suspension on here. So we got the RockShox Yari RC in the front. This one has the Debon Air Spring, which is a good spring right there, and a motion control RC damper. So fairly good damping from this one. The Yari is basically a, I guess, less expensive version of the RockShox Lyric, if you're familiar with that. So it's going to have like a lower end uh, damper and spring and all that, but it's still a great fork. Has 170 millimeters of suspension travel in this case, obviously, because it is an Enduro bike and it needs that much for handling those big hits and all of that so that's what it's designed for uh, 35 millimeter stanchions on this one so pretty much the same as a Lyric I know on the higher end slashes Trek is basically specking all of them with the RockShox Zeb now but as you can see here it does have the compression adjustment on the right side as well as the rebound on the bottom so still some good adjustment here and there so it's nice to see and then moving on to the rear we have a RockShox Deluxe Select Plus rear shock uh, this one also has the debonair springs and it has the select plus rl damper so this shock is more of a trail bike shock rather than an enduro shock um, they just spec this one on here, I'm assuming, because it's less expensive for this less expensive Slash model. But this one is one level below the Ultimate version of the Shock, which is the highest end one, so it is still pretty good. Uh, the Ultimate one just has some more adjustments, and basically every other Slash that you can buy comes with that uh, external piggyback reservoir, uh, that and that just provides some better performance when going downhill. So if you're not going to be riding like super intense downhill trails, you're not going to necessarily need that. Most people who own a Trek Slash are probably going to want to have that Shock on there because they're going to be riding pretty hard but for now since I'm personally not as experienced I'm just gonna ride with this one and see how it goes and as my skills progress I'll probably upgrade it to a you know super deluxe or something or maybe a coil shock as well all right enough of that suspension talk let's talk about these wheels next so First of all, with the rims, we got the Bontrager Line Comp 30 aluminum rims. These are tubeless ready and pretty much found on a lot of Trek bikes that are actually much lower end than this. I think they're pretty much, uh, they're also on the Roscoe's, um, even on my Roscoe 7 that's supposed to come with that. So that's thousand dollars less than this one. So it's not really great to see that on this bike specifically, but it makes sense since that's kind of like their lowest end aluminum rim that'll still work for this bike. But one thing that is super cool that I'll mention right here while I'm talking about the wheels is that the hubs are, are generic, you know, Bontrager alloy hubs, but there is a rapid drive 108 in the rear, which is amazing. That is 108 points of engagement on the rear hub. So you're going to be able to pedal really efficiently on this bike, and that's great to see. So I'm happy about that upgrade right there. And then for the tires, we have Bontrager XR5 team issue tires, which are tubeless ready, 120 TPI, and they are 29 inches in diameter, of course, for this race bike, but 2.5 inches wide in the front and in the rear so a good wide tire there but not so wide that it gets into the plus tire territory so that's a good figure i think that's a pretty good for an, an enduro bike that's you know gonna handle all those big bumps and everything it'll provide some good stability on the trail and this bike is set up tubeless it comes uh, with tubeless sealant so you can go ahead and install that and it's going to be fully ready to take on any trail you can run lower psi and not get any flats and stuff like that so it's going to be great next we have this drivetrain which is pretty interesting actually i, I was kind of surprised by the way the Trek spec this one out. So it's mainly a Shimano Dior M6100 1x12 drivetrain, which is a great drivetrain to have uh, that exact one on my Trek Roscoe 7, and I love it. It's very reliable. But this one's pretty mixed, actually. There are a few different parts from different Shimano ranges here. So starting with the shifter up here, this one's actually a Shimano SLX shifter, so an M7100 right here. So that is one level above the Dior M6100. So that's nice to see. SLX shifters are great. Uh, I have 
one on my Pro Caliber as well, and I like it for sure. It works very well pretty much all the time, so no need to really go crazy with that one, but you can definitely upgrade that if you wish. But coming back down here to the front crank set, we have the Shimano Dior M6120. This one has a 30-tooth ring right there, and it, it is 170 millimeters long, which is a great uh, thing that I've heard a lot of people liked uh, with this new slash that the crank arm length is shorter now, so you don't get as many pedal strikes on the rocks and everything while you're riding, so that's good. And then we have this Shimano Dior M6100 chain. Moving us back to a Shimano Dior XT M8100 rear derailleur. Um, so this is the one that surprised me. They expect a, a, a much higher end derailleur on this bike. So this is pretty much equivalent to the SRAM GX Eagle derailleur. It's a great one, super durable, super good materials and craftsmanship to make this one. It's pretty much always going to work right. Um, so I love that one. No complaints there. It's a great derailleur. And then the cassette back here is the Shimano Dior M6100. And it is a 10 to 51 tooth. So a really nice wide range there. Pretty much the widest you can get these days. Except for the 10 to 52 that SRAM offers. But I mean that's just one more tooth right there. So this is pretty much all you need. I I'm not really upset about this drivetrain at all. It makes sense for the Slash 7. And I'm happy that they threw on some extra higher end parts on there. Like the SLX shifter and the XT derailleur. So overall pretty nice drivetrain. I'm not really going to upgrade that one too much. At least not anytime soon. I'm going to focus on the suspension and, some, and the handlebars and some other stuff first. Alright but after that let's talk about these brakes. So these are the Shimano 4 piston hydraulic disc brakes. These have a uh, MT4100 lever as well as the MT420 calipers. So pretty much the same thing that we just saw in my last video. If you watched it on the Fuel X 9.7. Um, and here they are on a Slash 7 which is a slightly cheaper bike about $400 less ish or 300 but these are good they're four pistons so that's basically a necessity for an enduro bike so that's good they're nothing crazy they i think those are one of the things that i would want to upgrade sooner rather than later as well but they do have some nice wide rotors on there so in the rear we have a 180 millimeter rotor which is great for the rear then we have a 203 millimeter front rotor right there from shimano which is absolutely massive you can see like it's just it's bigger than the whole size of my hand so that's a great rotor to have. It definitely has some good stopping power for this bike right there. Okay, now let's move on to the finishing components, the final part that I'm going to talk about in terms of these specs. So first of all, we got a nice little seat post here, dropper seat post from Trans X. Uh, this one has 150 millimeters of travel, which is a good amount in my opinion. Some people want more than that, but I'm fine with that for sure. But this is an extra wide dropper post. You can see this is a 34.9 millimeter dropper post, which is pretty massive. It's actually almost the same size as the suspension for extensions right there which is pretty funny you can see uh, those side by side that it's like basically the same size and i just think that's hilarious i love that they put this extra wide dropper, dropper post on there which allows you to put a longer travel dropper post without having it flex too much so that's why they did that um, so that's a smart move on Trek's part. And then we have a Bontrager Arvada seat. You guys know about this one. This one has hollow chromoly rails on it. Uh, probably going to want to switch this one out as soon as possible because they're pretty uncomfortable. But uh, I'm going to leave them on for now. I'm not really too bothered by them. But I do prefer other saddles a lot more. And now let's move on to the front. So starting with the stem. This is a Bontrager Elite stem. 35mm clamp on this one. Zero degree. And it is 35mm long. So great for an enduro bike. Has the handlebars really close to you so you have a more upright position while going downhill and that's great to see. And then for the handlebar we got a Bontrager line alloy handlebar. Uh, also 35mm clamp of course but it is a 27.5mm rise which is a good amount of rise there actually and then this one's 820mm wide so definitely got to cut that one down. Uh, well, you don't have to, but I'd probably cut it down for my riding style. But I'm probably going to swap this one out in the future anyway for some carbon bars or something like that because I think it'll look a lot better on this bike. But now it's time to go out and take this bike on a short little test ride. I'll kind of just go in my backyard and find some random areas to throw this bike around. So let's go do that. All right, test riding my brand new Trek Slash 7. It's getting kind of dark, so I'm going to try to make this one quick. But let's just cut to the chase and get on some stuff here. There's nothing around in my backyard that's going to be, you know, worthy of what this bike can handle. Ooh. But I can have some fun here and there. There's a lot of construction going on in my backyard, so some good spots to bike around, I suppose. All right, drop her down. See what this thing can do. <laughs> nice little drop there, nothing crazy.
Let's see, I can definitely see the front wheel more than I'm used to seeing the front wheel on a bicycle. A really slack head tube angle. All right, I rode this section on my Fuel EX. Kind of started up top there and rode down. So I'm gonna do that again. I guess I'll try going up this time. I wasn't able to do that on my Fuel because I wasn't in the right gear, but man, I'm out of shape. Okay, yeah, I expect this bike to be pretty, well, not as good at climbing. Now this bike could totally make it up some decent climbs. I'm just out of shape and tired, so I'm giving up. <laughs> All right, let's ride down. <sighs> kind of in that easy gear from climbing up. Woo! Oh. <laughs> That felt fun. I think it feels a bit faster than the fuel. It is a longer bike just by the looks of it. Okay, go down this vertical section there also went on my fuel. Just to see here. Okay. Oh nice. <laughs> Weirdly enough, the fuel EX that I rode in my last video feels more like bulky and more burly which is strange i feel like maybe because of the carbon fiber but this one feels more like i can throw it around it's lively and all that but that's just my initial impression i'll see on the trail if it actually feels that way i just want to see what the speed's like we're gonna go down this hill up ahead yeah. Yeah, this bike is taking everything I throw at it with ease, which makes sense considering nothing I'm throwing at it is that hard. <laughs> Definitely gotta get my skills up before that point. Gotta ride my Fuel EX and my Rosco more. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little initial test ride on the Slash 7. This was really fun to ride actually. I'm happy I got this one for sure. But that is it for this video, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope all of you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, sorry about another new bike day video, but uh, there's probably, who knows how many other bikes in here that I haven't revealed yet on my channel. So you're gonna be seeing a lot more of those in the future. But yeah, besides that, I hope all of you have a wonderful morning today and remember to keep biking. <laughs>